Hi guys, um, just working on a project at the moment and I thought it was worth showing you a lot how I've gone about doing a certain thing. We've got these kind of gloves on the conveyor belt that come along and then they dip down into a liquid and they come back up and they dip down into another liquid. Um, I didn't want to use Bifrost because for this particular project it's got a quick turnaround time as you can see I'm rendering now and uh, we just needed to convey a sense of liquid um, the clients not too bothered about you know heavy dripping or anything like that it's literally just to convey the fact that these gloves go in one color come out another color go in again and uh, I wanted to you know kind of create um, the sense of, of a liquid so we started with Bifrost and the simulation times were they were long because we've got a lot of gloves going on um, two different versions of dips to be done and it was just a lot it was just a, you know it was just too much to to do so we started looking at other ways of recreating uh, something that would you know give us some kind of wake look um, it doesn't play so fast um, but it's not too slow either really so we managed this using boss the uh, the uh, boss solver um, which is worked out pretty cool actually so obviously every hand that dips in it hits the uh, geometry creates the kind of wake that we need um, and then in a minute you'll see that they sort of flip up and go into the blue liquid on the other side and I just thought I'd just quickly show you how you can use it in your animation and use it um, uh, in other ways as well because it doesn't have to be a wave solver as such is it's quite good for this for this kind of thing it's it's almost like soft bodies type of scenario and it doesn't really break either um, as you can see it's creating a wake there and we can like you know push the amplitude of this up but basically this scene is set up with um, uh, standing geometry as well so we're not using the actual gloves on this scene because that slowed things down a lot as well um, just because of the amount of geometry involved in these gloves to calculate the wake um, so quite simply we've just got these uh, kind of cubes which are just sat over the top these little standings um, and then everything switched off so they don't cast or receive shadows and they're not visible in reflections they're not there's no primary visibility on them whatsoever um, so yeah without and 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 also the gloves come out a different color every time but in this particular project fairly easy to do because one color goes in and it dips completely down there which gives you a great spot literally to just hide uh this shader and show this shader as you can see this one's kind of like ivory and these are going to come out white and when they go into the next tub along they uh they come out blue as well so it's literally just switching um geometry really it's just different sets of geometry um, just just animating the visibility of them so it's quite simple um, just gonna let this get over to the blue one and I'll just sort of show you how we did it and also um, we've obviously rendered off separate mats for these so that in post-production we can tweak the reflections on them um, uh, without tweaking the reflections over the whole scene so that's just using multi mats in V-Ray but if you're not using V-Ray I'm, I'm probably not going to go through that anyway uh, we've got a bit of depth of field going on this needs some colour tweaking um, as I said it's, it's not a large job it's just a quick turnaround we've got about two weeks to do it and it's quite a few other scenes other than this some some sort of molecular level scenes as well um, but if you're half interested in how we did it I'll just get started on showing you now so um we'll just start like a simple scene i'll just save this off things might slow down a bit because i'm rendering but i'm not using all the cores so we could be all right okay come on stop playing ball right so let's just get ourselves a little plane i'm just going to scale that up and scale that across there here i was going to go in and add in some divisions I'm going to crank it up fairly high so we've got a lot of divisions going on obviously you know we need a lot of divisions so that we can get more detail in our wake and I'm just going to hide this grid okay so let's just say we've got an object that is 
I don't know, let's just create a sort of object that's going to dip in and out. So I'll just bring this up. And I'm just for uh, just to show you, I did the other scene. I'm just going to put like a ridiculous amount of polys on this, um, and maybe just I don't know, just just do something just to show you that this has got more polys than the object that we're going to use for the uh, actual wake. Alrighty, uh, so I'm just going to move the pivot point back here. Or it's about here actually, and I'm just going to bring this here. And I do, and I'm literally just going to go and set a keyframe on the um, rotation. Have that dip down into there, and then from here, I'm just going to move it along like this, and then I'm going to bring it back up again. Like this. So literally it just goes in here. Oh, I didn't to translate over here. Uh do for what we're doing. Alright, so we've got that and then just quite simply just create yourself a little poly cube and just Scale that up a bit. Stick it over the top of the geometry. Now granted, this is really rough and ready, but you saw that it does work in, in a real world scenario. I might just do that. Uh, obviously, if you wanted you know, to sort of get this bulge coming out in the water as well, maybe you'd just be a bit naughty and put in a couple of... a couple of... Um, subdivisions, maybe we do that just quickly. Oh, move that over there, pull that back there, move that over there, pull that back there, and that do. Right, so from here, we're just gonna just go into the attribute editor. We're just gonna go off, 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 off. Okay, so that's not gonna render at all. If I just high PR that quickly, we'll see that it does not render. Cool, and obviously I'm going to parent that. So with that selected, so that selected, just hit P, and then it's just going to follow it, do its thing. Okay, so with this, I'm just going to rename this uh, liquid. Uh, we're just going to add a boss. So uh, let's just go into the effects menu, and we're just going to go boss, boss editor. Right. So we've got the wave solver and the wave influences. So the first thing we need to do is to create a solver. So now we've got a solver. It's a little bit like a nucleus. Um, now, I've spoken to quite a few people and they all say, well, why does this start at frame two? Um, there's a good reason for that. And I found out the hard way is that if you set this to frame one and you just rewind and play, it doesn't give the solver kind of enough time. It must look a frame backwards so it must look at like frame one consider it and then start the simulation on frame two um, if you set this to one it's not able to do that in the timeline and it won't go down into minus numbers or negative numbers um, and I found that out by I set it to one and then just started to batch render the whole thing and it just went crazy the, the simulation just went mental but set that at two and it renders just fine so just keep that in mind so we've got a boss wave solver and then we're just going to select our standing geometry i'll just rename that standing geometry and we're going to create a wave influence which is on this side so we've got a wave influence and a boss solver so if i rewind and play now not too much should happen really and there we go we start to get some movement in there and because we've got like a fairly high poly going on, it's not so bad um, in terms of detail. So that looks all right. And then I might just grab uh, the amplitude so we can set up to three. As you can see, this just changes there and we get to see it a bit more. Uh, you don't want to go too high on this, it could look a bit weird, but we're just going to rewind and play that and just see how that looks. 
and that's pretty good you kind of get that kind of liquidy look um, and yeah it's so much faster than doing anything in Bifrost um, if you just want to get you know if you just maybe you're working with paint uh, water a boat anything really um, it works nicely it's very fast um, and you can just shade it not you know there's no there's no real difficulty as you can see it doesn't start on frame one if we just flip forward one frame nothing happens but then again that's not in the water anyway um, that is it really it's that simple um, so I implore you to use this if you need to do any kind of liquid simulation where you don't need lots of splashes and stuff like that coming out um, so yeah that's it really just a quick one guys just for I'd sort of share with you what I'm doing at the moment which is you know the reason why I'm not doing tutorials all the time is because I've got uh, work on quite a lot um, and so but I just thought well while, it's, while I'm rendering why not knock out a little tutorial for my buddies on YouTube um, yeah that's about it apart from actually there's one thing um, let's just go here just want to share this with you I've got a website um, where I create my own digital artwork uh, this is actually linked into Behance, so you can find me on Behance if you want. Um, and I'm going to start doing some tutorials based on this kind of stuff. So, kind of like really complicated, complex looking um, models. How I'm doing them in Maya, how I'm rendering them in V-Ray. But that will also come over to uh, Arnold as well. Um, yeah, I mean, just when I find a bit of time, that's when I'm sort of doing my own stuff. And if you just go to Behance, you can find me on there as well. If you want to follow me, I'd happily follow you back. That's Behance forward slash Escapey Feel. I'm on there. Um, just sort of getting involved in this community, really. I haven't really been here that long, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there's just some stuff that I could show you. Um, which all looks pretty cool. I can show you how to make this. Uh, so yeah, follow me on there. I'll follow you back. Um, and some tutorials coming soon on how I do some of this stuff. And um, yeah, just uh, it, really this is this is nothing to do with my clients. This is all just my own artwork where um, I just like to play around and just do some things that interest me. I've got a bit of an obsession with rendering curves at the moment. In, uh, in Maya and V-Ray just kind of with that kind of photo reel ish almost like it's been photographed in the dark that kind of look I'm really really liking that at the moment also some more complicated stuff this particular image was um, created in V-Ray and it's displaced volumetrics um, which with camera projections as well um, so it might be a slightly more complicated tutorial but you can get some really cool looks i mean none of this was modeled it was literally just a head full head and all of these cuts holes crevices everything's all come from volumetric displacement so uh yeah and I'll show you how to do that in v-ray because i know at the moment you can do it in arnold i wasn't sure if you could do it in v-ray but you can just need to get your head around it and sort of play around with it and stuff again this is more V-Ray displaced volumetric stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of kind of fun. Anyway, guys, I'll speak to you soon. Um, when I finish rendering, I'll get some more tutorials up. <laughs> All right, cheers. See you later, guys.